Hello and welcome to Paleo Logos. I'm Peter, and thanks for joining me today as we discuss two very interesting ancient human species, Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. This is OH7, the original specimen of Homo habilis that was discovered by the Leakeys at the famous site of Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. This gorge is known for a variety of spectacular discoveries of hominin fossils and lots of stone tools. So when the Leakeys found this somewhat human-like creature, they realized that very possibly it had been the maker of the stone tools that they found, and thus they called it Homo habilis, meaning handy man. Now, what can we really learn about Homo habilis from this original specimen that was found? Well, this specimen is, you can see, a jawbone here with quite a few of the teeth. It's uh, somewhat crushed on one side, as you can see here. Along with this, were found a variety of other small bone fragments, mostly finger bones. And the Leakeys interpreted these finger bones to mean that Habilis had a somewhat human-like hand, and thus would have been capable of knocking stones together in a similar way to humans, meaning that it could have been the creator of the stone tools which they found near the site. Let's compare this Homo habilis jaw to the jaw of a modern human. When we compare the jaw of Homo habilis, this one here, to the jaw of the human, some very striking things are apparent. First of all, you can see the canine teeth of Homo habilis. Those are those teeth that stick up on either side of your mouth, your four and all, and the canine teeth are something that varies quite a bit among the apes. Chimpanzees and gorillas have huge, big, long canines that stick out. But as you can see here, Homo habilis didn't really have that. Their canine teeth were a little more pronounced than ours, perhaps, but not terribly pronounced. Homo habilis also has very large molars for its size. When we compare these jaws, you can see that Homo habilis was a bit smaller than a modern human in terms of jaw size. But you can see that its molars there are rivaling perhaps even larger than a modern human jaw. So we have a small creature with some very, very big molar teeth there. Paleoanthropologists now knew that there was a new species of human. And it wasn't long before new fossils started cropping up all over. Fossils of Homo habilis have been found in Tanzania, East Africa, South Africa, and other countries. However, Homo habilis still remains somewhat elusive. The fossils of Homo habilis are very rare, and that's what makes this particular cranium so special. It is called KNMER 1813. The first part of its name comes from the Kenya National Museum, East Rudolph. So this was found in Kenya. And this is perhaps one of the most spectacular skulls of this species. And we don't have very many belonging to this species that are as complete as this particular individual here. Now, the skull was in lots of fragments and needed to be reconstructed. And part of the face here is kind of smunched a little bit, which is why it has a little bit of a slant-eyed look to it. But let's compare it to a modern human and see the differences. So here is Homo habilis, KNMER 1813, and this is the modern human. One of the first things that you'll probably recognize is the tininess of Homo habilis. Homo habilis had a very small cranium and a very small brain. And when compared to the modern human, you can really just see how tiny 
Habilis was. Their brain capacity is around, I believe, 500 cubic centimeters, whereas ours is more like 1,400. So we have a lot more space inside our skulls for our brain. Homo habilis had a differently shaped brow, as many of these human species that we've been looking at did. It, you can see here in the side view, it has a little bit of a brow here, and then the skull slopes backwards. It doesn't have the high forehead like us modern humans. If we turn and look at it from the top like that, you can see that it has a pronounced constriction here behind the eyes called the post orbital, the orbits being the eyes, constriction here. And it has a little bit, uh, perhaps more projecting zygomatic arch there than the modern human, which is right there, it has that arch. When we look at the sides of this skull here, we can see, especially on this left side here, a rather pronounced little ridge coming along here. And that's the ridge for muscle attachment for the jaw. And Homo habilis appears to have had at least a somewhat strong jaw. When we look at the center of the skull, right in the middle, we see how it kind of peaks a little bit right there. And it's not that the chewing muscles actually attach down the center there, as in Paranthropus, where they have a giant crest down the middle of their head. But we see what is called a sagittal keel, a little pronouncement, it almost comes up to a peak right in the middle of the skull there at the top. When we look at the rear of the skull, you'll notice that the base is very wide and it gets narrower up towards the top. That is different from what we see in humans, where it's very narrow at the bottom and gets wider up at top. So there's a bit of a difference in the shape of the brain case of these creatures. I also have another Homo habilis skull, and it's been right in plain sight here all along through quite a few of our videos. This is the skull of STW53, and it was found in Transvaal, South Africa. It is a little larger than the other skull of Homo habilis that we just looked at. Many paleoanthropologists think that Homo habilis was a sexually dimorphic species. Humans today are obviously sexually dimorphic. Males tend to be larger and more robust than females. And paleoanthropologists believe that that sexual dimorphism may have been more pronounced in Homo habilis. We can see many of those similar features that we just looked at, the shape of the brain case. And when we look down here, we can see that a little bit of the foramen magnum has been preserved. It's not entirely certain exactly how that was positioned, but I think this reconstruction may have been fairly accurate in putting the, re the foramen magnum in this central location right there, more similar to it, how it is in humans. We do have other Homo habilis skulls that have a more centrally placed foramen magnum telling us that Homo habilis was walking upright. Another line of evidence that supports the idea that Homo habilis walked upright is this collection of foot bones right here known as OH8. Once again, it's from the famous site of Olduvai Gorge and it's a very human-like foot. We have, um, quite a few of the bones of the ankle and the midfoot, uh, the extensions of the toes, the uh, pedal phalanges are missing, but we have uh, quite a few bones and we can tell quite a bit about the various shape of the foot and it appears quite human-like. Now, there's a debate going on among paleoanthropologists and it remains somewhat unclear exactly which fossils belong to the species Homo habilis, because many of the fossils are found isolated from one another. This, for example, is found by itself, so we can't necessarily say that this belonged to Homo habilis because we didn't find a Homo habilis skull right by it. And there's all sorts of cases of that in the fossil record. We have these full, complete femurs that we found, and 
we're not entirely sure exactly what species they belong to, but people think that it's probably Homo habilis. So there have been some skeletons of Homo habilis that have been found. One of those, for example, is OH62. It's probably one of basically two com fairly complete skeletons of Homo habilis that have allowed us to kind of get the general body proportions of Homo habilis. But there's quite a bit that's not known about this species because the fossil record surrounding its remains is so sparse. And we may possibly be including some bones that aren't actually from Homo habilis in with those that actually are. When we look at the limb proportions of Homo habilis, it appears to have similar limb proportions to Australopithecines. So fairly long arms, but also legs, and Homo habilis could walk upright. And when we do baromenological evaluation of Homo habilis, so far focusing only on the skull, what we find is that Homo habilis clusters with humans. Uh, modern humans, Neanderthals, Homo erectus, all these creatures cluster together with Homo habilis to form this humankind. So it appears most likely that Homo habilis, or the skulls, the specific skulls that we're talking about, did belong to humans. And so Homo habilis was an ancient type of human that lived in Africa quite soon after the flood. Radiometric dates would suggest that Homo habilis lived around 3 million years ago. I obviously have some disagreements with radiometric dating, and when we understand Homo habilis from a creationist point of view, it appears that these are some of the very earliest humans to arrive in Africa. We had, of course, the Tower of Babel soon after the flood, and then the dispersion of humans over the earth. And it appears that some of the very first people to enter into Africa may have been the Habilines. Um, the, these are probably remains of some of the first explorers into this region of Africa. Thanks for joining me today as we looked at Homo habilis. Make sure to subscribe so that you can see my latest videos on your YouTube homepage. Thanks for joining me.